Sleep Part 3 I didn't realize I was going to make a Part 3, but marketing. The Tao Di Ching I was writing a future post titled, Don't Overdrive Your Headlights. It will be linked here when I publish that post. And I decided to split out part of the writing and make it a Part 3 to my popular series on sleep. I could have titled this post, Waking Up, and used the title as an analogy for waking up from the delusion of separateness and form, referencing the idea that my practice is to wake up from my attachments to the 10,000 things as discussed in Chapter 42 of the Tao Te Ching, but I won't. The Tao begot one, the one begot two, the two begot three, and the three begot the ten thousand things. Did I just quote the Tao Te Ching? WTF, Adam? What I will do is discuss my altar and share my morning ritual, the other half of my sleep ritual, and let you folks go read the Tao Te Ching for yourselves. It's available in a number of forms for free online and a quick read that I would do well to spend a few more years paging through myself. My Altar My morning ritual begins at my altar. Previously, this was my nightstand, but when I started my sabbatical, which you can read about in a post I've linked to in the blog, I decided to repurpose it. It's still conveniently located right next to my bed, but to show my commitment to mindfulness and empty space, I only use it for sacred objects. Here are some things I don't put on my altar. Eyeglasses, phone, headphones, blowtorch, vitamins, and water jug. Here are the things that currently reside on my altar. A hand-painted tie from my deceased friend Jarvis, who trained horses and loved giraffes. My broken Buddha statue, which you can read about in my post titled Broken Buddha, link in the blog. Two candles, a singing bowl resting on a small cushion, one of my Donald Trump socks from a few pairs that my good friend Steve gave me, my secret blend of scented oils, the drumstick from the hand drum I am borrowing from my friend Cat, a seashell I use to hold incense or burn sage in, the necklace with scented oil I got from my friend Elazar. You can check out his work and buy one for yourself at his shop made Evanston store. A dollar, also from Elazar, mitzvah money that I was supposed to give to charity when I got home safe after driving home late from a retreat we were on. My oil diffuser, along with its cracked bowl piece. The bowl piece broke from applying the blowtorch to it. Two eye masks that I've not used recently but are there for later in the season when there is more light in the mornings and the evenings. My dad's old watch. My journal that I write my private thoughts in most evenings before bed. A paper crane. A throwback to my Chicago crane collective days when I would teach folks origami as a pathway to mindfulness and community. And a few Easter eggs for those who know what they are looking for. Click the link in the blog to see a picture of my altar. 1. Take a few deep breaths to shake off the night's sleep and bring in presence. 2. Reach below the altar to find my blowtorch and ignite the flame. 3. Set the candles, singing bowl, and oil diffuser back in place as they were moved to facilitate my writing and the snuffing of the candles the evening prior. 4. Light the candles. 5. Place the blowtorch back underneath the altar. 6. Strike the bowl one time and give a little bow. 7. Strike the hand drum one time. 8. Take the seashell and empty its ashes into the toilet. 9. Take care of my biology if I have to. 10. Return to the altar 
and reach into the drawer at the front for some incense that lives in a little baggie. Eleven. If there are broken incense pieces, I use those first, and if not, I'll break a whole stick in half and wedge each piece into the holes in the seashell, setting the seashell back on the altar. 12. Reach below the altar to find my blowtorch again and ignite the flame. 13. Light the tips of the incense. 14. Smudge my bedroom and attach bathroom by walking around the boundaries of each room, burning incense in hand. In the past... I have used sage for this purpose. Return the seashell to the altar. 16. Take a candle into the bathroom and brush my teeth. 17. Return the candle to the altar. 18. Commence formal meditation practice for 10 to 30 minutes, which you can read about in my post titled, My In Formal Meditation Practice. Link in the blog. 19. Hit the drum three times. 20. Hit the bell three times. 21. Place the singing bowl and the oil diffuser on top of the candles to snuff them out. O C D. My morning ritual is the alternate bookend to my sleep ritual. From 7 p.m. when I turn off my phone until around 5 a.m., when I blow out the candles, I take this time to connect to source, stillness, peace, and silence. I need this time to feel centered and ready to face the chaos of the world, the 10,000 things. Between eating and sleeping, that's about 12 hours, or half of my day. Eight more hours are spent at my day job, leaving around four hours on the weekdays, for me to do my writings, keep up with chores, get some exercise, and have a social life. Although it may not seem like much, I have observed that I get more done in those four hours than I would have in an entire day prior to bringing mindfulness into my life. Even better, I don't feel stressed while doing it. Tasks just appear, and I move through them with ease. As my relationship with my rituals deepens, I feel like every task is merely the next event in the ritual. The practice teaches me how to abandon my natural tendency to obsess over the outcome instead of focusing on the quality of my actions and allowing the results to look after themselves. The rituals I engage in strengthen my mindfulness muscle and give me the fortitude to confront the world as it is. In a previous life, my sleep was dismal. I would stay up until I was so exhausted I could barely keep my eyes open, watching videos on my phone in bed. In the morning, I would start my day in a rush, running around to fulfill my obligations with little connection to the present and living a life of hustle and deprivation of both sleep and energy. These rituals give my life a sense of peace, patience, and presence. There is an urge to put it all down and try to get more done, and sometimes that urge wins out. I complete the entire 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. ritual about 75% of the time. I'm not immune to getting sucked into the internet at 6.30 p.m. only to find it's nearly 8 before I think about turning off my phone. Sometimes I sleep in and need to rush off to something or I'll go through the entire morning ritual and decide to take a nap, read, go back to sleep, afterwards like I did today. Occasionally I even stay out late and come home to reluctantly light some candles and smack the bowl before I go to bed. The structures that I've created are set in extreme contrast to the way things were 20 years ago. It's interesting how much space I have in my life to create and connect, even though so much of my time is taken up by ritual. 
I could argue the opposite and admit that there is a certain freedom in being unstructured with one's time. I can see how I may be limiting myself by creating rigid structures or even exhibiting slight obsessive compulsive behavior. Those thoughts are there too. I just allow them to be. A non-prescriptive suggestion. For me, these rigid structures are the steel girders on which I am building a life of mindfulness. With their support, I can be more present for the people I love and show up with greater integrity. Knowing how my day will end and begin allows me to appreciate the value of consistency. As I continue these rituals, I increasingly trust myself to follow through with my commitments and take on only what makes sense for my life. This practice isn't prescriptive. Everyone has to live according to their own rhythm. I suggest, however, that you try it out for yourself, even if just for a little bit. Experience how it feels to spend a large portion of your day doing the same things in the same way, not out of obligation, but as an act of joy and connection. If you don't get something good out of it, you can have your money back. <laughs>